The research for the whole department is really focused on nanoscale materials. For materials at the nanoscale, it really pertains to the size of the materials. An atom is about a quarter of a nanometer, so one nanometer is four atoms. To see these atoms and to study them and to study their structure, then we use powerful electron microscopes like the machine which uh, I'm sitting at. And that can magnify over a million times and see the atomic structure directly in these nanomaterials and nanoparticles. We are trying to make nanomaterials for solar energy capture, for batteries and energy storage, for information storage, and even for cancer detection and therapy. So one of our most exciting projects is looking at solar energy conversion. So normally when you get sunlight, you might use a photovoltaic cell to convert about 20% of that into electricity, which means it's 80% inefficient. And most of that energy goes out in the form of heat. And so what we'd like to do is be able to harvest that heat and combine it with a process to get you higher total efficiency. In real world applications, what we'd like to do is to be able to piggyback onto some of the existing technologies to make them even more efficient and actually make them cost competitive without subsidies. That's our goal. I have a research group that studies the thermomechanical properties of materials um, uh, in a wide range of different technologies, including some biological tissues uh, like human skin. So in uh, one of our research programs, we're interested in hybrid materials and how they can be used to protect various technologies from environmental exposure. We can apply many of the methods that we've developed um, to help advance treatments, uh, sunscreens for example, uh, um, for human skin, and in a, in a quantitative way that's not really been done before, um, assess how a sunscreen actually prevents degradation. My areas of expertise is uh, designing nanomaterials for different technological area applications including energy and environments. One of our projects that is on the um, next generation of energy storage, basically batteries. We have been designing the materials we can, which can store a lot more charges, for example lithium ions, to store a lot more energy. The battery technology we develop for the next generation have a lot more implication to everybody's life, day-to-day -day life, including how do you uh, increase the penetration of battery use for the home, for the electrical grid, to uh, reduce our consumption of uh, fossil fuels, to reduce carbon dioxide emission. They can be used from our day-to-day -day life of cell phone and laptops, batteries, to emerging application and uh, electrical vehicles. In addition to teaching, I also run a research group of about um, 12 students and postdoctoral um, fellows who are actively working on research in uh, nanophotonics. We're working on um, a process or a technology called upconversion that can take two lower energy photons that would normally get transmitted through the cell, um, combine them together into a higher energy photon that then can be absorbed by the cell above it. The sun provides more energy to the earth um, in an hour than we essentially use in an entire year. So our group is trying to work on ways to make more efficient use of the power that's provided from sunlight to create um, a very clean um, source of energy. One of those applications would be in a solar fuel. One of the benefits um, would be um, the ability to fill up your gas tank in your automobile with water um, and then use power from the sun to power your automobile rather than relying on having to fuel up with a gasoline that um, burns carbon dioxide. Well, as for our faculty, we are very, very proud of our young people. It's very competitive in order to be selected to be a faculty member here, and they have all performed incredibly well at forging new areas and creating new ideas and inspiring the students to do fantastic research. In terms of students, we have graduated 
about 20 undergraduates, 20 masters and 20 PhDs each year. Over the years I've had a large number of doctoral students as well as some master students and they've gone out and done great things in industry and academia. The thing that we're most proud of is the students who come out of the group, is their preparation, their ability to handle problems independently and really seek uh, new answers.